Peggy 12. I knew this was going to happen because I had three words and now I need to remember what, what they were. Adventure, survival. And Windbound for me is probably about exploration, discovery, and adventure. Ancient? No. I'll go with Mystic. Windbound is a crafting survival game that marries the experience of the, the open world uh, procedurally generated experience with a, a, a story and narrative that drives you through the whole adventure. And coupling that with you being on a boat, carrying your base through the whole thing as you go, makes it a really unique experience. So when we started, we basically just had uh, uh, Kara, the protagonist, collecting resources, corrupting um, you know, slings and bow and arrows and kind of things like that. That was great, but at some point, Mitch looked out onto the, the ocean that was surrounding the island and said, well, I kind of want to go out there. So at the beginning of the game, Kara finds herself shipwrecked and basically just needs to survive. She comes from a people who have made their living, living off the land. They're hunters and gatherers, but then they also, just as much as important as the land to them is the sea. We wanted her to be a character that was um, able to survive in the situation. She isn't uh, completely out of her depth. So when she washes up on shore, she knows what she needs to do to, to hunt and gather food to survive. She knows the resources she needs to start crafting her initial canoe and to start crafting sails and to eventually get off uh, that first island onto the next and the next until she can eventually um, make her way back to her family. Early on when you first start the game, you'll more or less see the same types of islands. So it is procedurally generated, but then as you play through the game, there'll be more types of islands with different biomes and different visuals and lighting. It's quite intentionally very friendly early on. And then as you progress through the game, you'll start getting introduced to more obstacles within the environment, both the environment itself and the creatures that make things feel more hostile. So as the player goes through, they'll go through forests and deserts and swamps and uh, savannah kind of landscapes. And every player will see that differently, going more into the belly of the beast as you're going through it. When we initially came up with the idea with the boat, I'd been going out on a few sailing adventures with my brother and a lake near his place. Um, and as soon as we mentioned the idea of putting a boat into the game, uh, I immediately wanted to try and replicate having that experience of, of really uh, raising and lowering the sails and tightening the sails in and out. Once you get your head around how that actually works is really rewarding and a really fun experience. The boat was a great, a great way to have players be able to still get that level of commitment and investment in something that they, they care about and rely on, um, but also be able to not feel tied down to one single location. Obviously there are still risks involved, like you, you've got reefs and you've got rocks and you've got waves and all that sort of thing, um, which don't play nice with a boat, but you're, you're never tied down to one place. You, you rely on your boat to not only collect resources, but it's, it's also your way to, to get back home, ultimately. Working on the creatures especially, I think is probably my favorite part, as well as being the most challenging. They've all got this level of kind of a bit of familiarity, but they're also very obviously distinct and different from the things you might expect to see. The, the blink, the sort of little rabbit thing, that's actually just me going like, <laughs> and you speed it up, you get this <laughs> sort of thing. Um. <laughs> Rather than being covered in regular fur, you'll see on their ears, they've got like these sort of, we call them blink fronds. They're almost like a, a feathery type of thing. Then you'll use that for crafting a um, crafting your arrows and things like that. The pond wompers, which will buy a toxic sort of sludge at, at Kara and um, temporarily poison her or anything else that's around. It's got this big burp, it does. And so I actually had to do this sort of <laughs> sound and slow that right down. And then it sounds like this giant, tremendous burp. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
having the the Nautilus there was uh, one of the things we had right at the very beginning. Um, yeah, the, the the idea of having this big creature that played some part in the story and how you got through the world uh, was something that was there right from the very beginning. The Nautilus, she finds out more about it as she plays through the game and more about uh, the world that she's in and the, the nature of the storms and, and everything around her. It's obviously got a lot of um, power behind it. Uh, it's something that uh, gives, the, gives the impression of being ancient, perhaps doesn't take kindly to the, the presence of Kara or her tribe sailing so closely. I would hesitate to say more than that without just telling you what happens at the end. Station.